Not all of the projects that I make are things that I actually need. I make some because I just enjoy building things and I think it'll be interesting. Take this one for example. I really don't think I'll get a lot of use out of it since I don't do a lot of the type of work that a draw knife is used for. But who knows, maybe that'll change at some point, especially now that I have one. It's hard to do something with something if you don't have it. I'm just marking the shape out more or less from memory, uh, from looking at pictures on the internet mostly, trying to fit it into the blade as best I can. I wound up with a cutting edge that's five inches long, and that's pretty much standard for a small draw knife. The raw material is an old diamond blade that I've had for a few years and the body of the blade is around an eighth of an inch thick. I already cut a small piece off a while back and tested it to see if it could be hardened so I know it's a good quality steel and it should hold an edge reasonably well. For some reason I was having a problem with the first cutting disc. It wasn't cutting as quickly as it should and it was binding in the cut and overheating the metal so I changed it for another one, a newer one and that worked a lot better. I occasionally get asked if this can be done with like a regular hacksaw or a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, but the steel in most of these blades is already hardened and tempered, so it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to cut with those tools. Of course a plasma cutter could do it, but then you spend as much time again grinding it down to the final shape. If you've watched a few of my other videos, You'll know that I have a cordless grinder that I use often, and you might be wondering why I'm not using it here. Cordless is great for quick cuts, where it's not practical to run power out to where you're working, but the blades will last longer and cut faster with the higher speed corded tools. When you're doing something like this, it's always nice to have a second grinder with a regular grinding disc on there to quickly switch back and forth between cutting and smoothing. So with the basic shape cut out, I can mark and roughly grind the bevel for the cutting edge. Here I'm trimming off the ends of the arm square, and then I'm going to cut part of the way in for something I want to do later in the build. Originally I was going to do all of the metal shaping with just a handheld grinder, but I figured since I have a belt grinder, I may as well use it to clean up the bevel. This is my homemade 2x72 grinder, and there are plans available for this on my website. The link is in the description. To guide the blade at the right angle, I've just clamped a block of wood onto the tool rest. It probably wasn't needed since, like I said, this steel is already hardened and I didn't do anything to overheat it while I was working it to change that. But I figure it wouldn't hurt to heat treat it again. I didn't go overboard with the cleaning, just getting rid of the surface rust and scale from heating the blade was enough for me. But of course you could bring this right up to a high shine if that's your thing. Now back in the workshop I cut out a piece of maple for the handles and I had kind of an interesting way to attach them to the blade. I cut a slot just thick enough for the tang to fit in rather than trying to drill a slot through. And that's quite a bit faster and easier, and I'll just fill the open side of the slot later. Nothing fancy on the lathe, I'm just shooting for a basic handle shape that's fat on the end so you can get a good grip on it.
And now for the reason why I cut those slots into the ends of the tangs. The last thing you want is for one of the handles to slip off the tang while you're using the tool. So you need a way to stop that from happening. And I figured bending over the ends like this was the quickest and easiest way to do that. And when you burn it in like this, it looks pretty cool too. I was going to use copper pipe for the ferrule in the beginning, but I remembered that I wanted to try wrapping copper wire around something like this at some point, but I figured I'd try it out here just to see how it looks. This is just 14 gauge house wire that I stripped the insulation off of, and it's tricky to get it on there evenly. I really should have done the wrapping part before I put the handle on, just to get the shape perfect, then I could slip it on after the handle was glued in place. Anyway, I got it done and then gave it a good coat of epoxy to fix it in place. I don't like a lot of plasticky finish on tool handles. And so I just put a couple of coats of linseed oil on, more or less just to make the wood look better for the photos. And of course the oil does give a little bit of protection to the wood as well. I gave it a couple of days to dry and then I tried out the knife for the first time, just on a piece of softwood to see how well it would work. Anyway, it seems to work pretty good and it's comfortable to use. And who knows, you might be seeing it in other upcoming projects. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative and entertaining. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.